welcome to episode one of the Future Cities Africa series focusing on urban governance and how to get it right in managing urban growth in towns and cities in Kenya. We've collaborated with the Architectural Association of Kenya's Town Planners chapter. In this first episode, we discuss the essentials for orderly urban growth and managing urban development. My guest today is Cyrus Mbisi, a town planner and chairperson of the Town Planners chapter of the Architectural Association of Kenya. Cyrus, welcome. Why is the management of urbanization and growth so important in the Kenyan context? Thank you, Dan, uh, for the question. And, and, and my answer is actually uh, short, uh, precise, that urbanization is actually the emerging new way of life. Uh, at the moment, about 30% of the Kenyan population, consisting about 47.6 million people, actually live in our urban areas. Uh, we're projecting this to be actually half of the uh, Kenyan population by year 2050. And, 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 and in absolute numbers, and we are talking about uh, 44 million people, that's slightly uh, uh, the same number uh, because now we are about 47. So it's, it's actually a doubling of the population. And, and half of that then will be uh, uh, hosted in urban areas. So it is an important uh, discussion. And the new focus uh, about our human settlement should actually be in the urban areas. It's the second one is actually uh, our, 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 our population is uniquely a uh, youthful population uh, because we're talking about about 50% being under, uh, under 24 years of age, uh, going by the last census in 2019. Uh, and we know uh, from uh, studies that uh, younger people tend to uh, uh, migrate outside uh, the core city. So they are the one probably going to uh, be fully urban sprawl. And, and if this is the case, then we need to manage urban areas uh, better uh, and, 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 and I think in a more progressive uh, way than uh, uh, I guess we are doing at the moment. Uh, I would also want to say that uh, from studies that uh, have been conducted, I think uh, uh, here I want to cite uh, studies by the Ministry of Evolution under the Urban Development Department, uh, jointly with the UN Habitat, uh, we've established uh, through those studies serious gaps in, in, in our planning uh, units. Uh, remember that these urban areas, these towns, these cities, they need uh, urban governance. They need to be managed in a way that uh, then they were able to deliver uh, hot my services and are able now to uh, deliver the safe, inclusive, and, and, and progressive uh, uh, settlements uh, for, for us uh, humans. And to do that, then they needed first to uh, be resourced in, the, in terms of uh, create the system that now is able to run these affairs, is able now to prioritize what needs to be done, where, where and uh, uh, at what level, uh, facing out all these. So if this uh, capacity is missing, then there's no way then uh, our, our urban areas, our cities, our towns will uh, be able to function optimally. And that's why we are interested actually as a, as a professional association, as a, uh, interest parties in, 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 in our urbanization uh, to shine uh, focus or shine light uh, on these gaps so that uh, action can be taken and, 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 and the, the right capacity and, and the right kind of uh, competencies and skills can then be transferred uh, effectively to these units because our future entirely depends uh, on these actions. Cyrus, what is the place of technology and related innovations? Kenya, if I'm not wrong, has been uh, uh, part of the leading park in Africa in terms of testing or adopting some of these technologies. We've, we've seen they've been uh, quite uh, effective in uh, uh, fintech and financial systems. And PESA, I think, is a gift from Kenya to the world uh, where you're able now to, through your mobile telephony, you're able now to connect, uh, send money, receive money from across the world. So I think uh, uh, that's a gift that uh, has come from this. And I think I can trace this to the landing of fiber uh, cable uh, that has really uh, given access to internet and access to related uh, applications, uh, actually such a leap uh, forward. So I think uh, in, 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 in the area of urban development, I think uh, we there, there have been a lot of innovations, I think, uh, uh, some of our cities are actually running on e-permit systems, where now if, if you're going to do any development in, in anywhere in the, the, those uh, 
uh, urban areas, then uh, you can go online. You can just make the application, or someone makes the application on their behalf. And also the the entire process of considering those applications and actually issuing the final or granting the final permit, either building permit or uh, uh, planning permit, then it's efficient uh, in that sense. Uh, what uh, we've noted and what we've not uh, that I think is an area of improvement or probably uh, what we need to do as urban areas, I think we need uh, to make sure that these systems are actually based on, on, on plants and that actually uh, updated uh, about plants, city plants, town plants uh, to the neighbor level. I, I'll keep saying that because uh, without having the image of your neighborhood, then there's no way you can have the image of the city. So that if we can have the image uh, at that level, local neighbor level clear, then, uh, then we can mishmash all these neighbors and probably uh, get the city uh, uh, scale of the different components. Uh, uh, so these, if we can have all the updated plans and, and make sure they are, they are not outdated uh, for every urban area, every uh, uh, municipality, every town, every city, then those e-permit innovation technologies, I think they will make a lot of sense because now they become now instruments of delivering this image of a city that we've actually negotiated and agreed upon as a different stakeholders who have an interest in our development of any city uh, across the land. So I think that will be uh, quite important. I think also in the, in the formulation of this plan, I think there's a place of technology. Uh, and, and most of our, even our legal systems or policy GIS-based uh, plans uh, and all that, uh, it's easy to deliver that from the uh, private sector. Private sectors always seems to be quite adaptive to changing technology, changing new ideas and all that. Uh, uh, but, but it is actually uh, quite the irony that you can deliver all that to government, but if government doesn't have the same level of the system, then there's no way then that, that process, that coordination can be efficient. So that's why we, we always throughout uh, uh, this conversation, we insisting there has to be uh, commensurate capacity also the public the public sector unit so that it is it, 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 it's a perfect fit that you're delivering uh, through the tendering of uh, preparation of these plans uh, to the private sector who have the capacity you should also make sure that their investments uh, are almost at the same level uh, going to uh, establishing the GIS labs trying to have the right personnel uh, uh, having the right kind of licenses. I'm sure there, there are places where even to update, uh, to renew a license of some of these applications uh, requires money. So if it's not updated, so the whole system can actually uh, be moribund. That's not functional. It's not serving the intended needs. So there has to be, there is a place for investment to ensure that this technology is, is, is actually uh, widespread in our urban planning unit uh, because there's work to be done uh, through such a system. And lastly, I think uh, in terms of data, the data is kept by different agencies and is, it is the integration of this data, uh, the desk of the urban planner, or whoever is manipulating the data that is able to become useful. For example, if uh, there's an agency that uh, supplying power to the urban area, to the city, the town, is another one uh, managing water systems, is another one uh, managing cable or ICT, uh, uh, and there's, an, there's also those ones doing road networks and, and a different uh, mass transit system. That data needs to be aggregated so that whenever we are making a decision or, or even updating our plans, then that data becomes useful. And uh, uh, the plans that are resultant of that process, then they are able to best reflect to the existing situation. And through that, then we're able also to project uh, uh, the desired city and also able to even collaborate better. We also even able to do much, much more. And, 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 and I want to commend the government uh, for being uh, a leader in Atisasa and other platforms uh, that seek to get some of this data, especially on land ownership, land tenure, uh, on, 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 on a digital platform, so that that data can be manipulated as opposed to having manual papers and all that. That is very difficult to actually inform decision making and those uh, kind of things. And I think this is also one area which I recognize as an opportunity that now government can, can even uh, uh, make investments in an integrated system that 
mandates all these agencies that is holding this data because it's not for their own it's for, for all of us as, as, as residents as, as, as stakeholders in, 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 the, in the city building project to have access to this data and actually get to use it so a, that coordination uh, uh, and integration of this data must be uh, public sector led so that we're able not to get that quite efficiently and when we need it uh, for updating and all that and also uh, lastly when we're also considering uh, development, upper development applications, uh, building permits, uh, planning permits, then this data also informs whether that development is fit uh, for, for, uh, for the location, for the area that's being proposed for, or it's not. You can't do that when you don't have all this data, even about uh, the natural systems, environmental systems, and how uh, that structure is going to impact maybe the, the neighborhood character, and, and, and a lot of systems, uh, uh, a lot of cities actually currently are trying to retrofit uh, mass transit systems. Then you realize there's actually no, 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 no land, no space. Uh, if this data was available actually, actually before, and then it, it is possible uh, to inform uh, better decision making progressively and, and help us actually deliver uh, uh, the city building project that uh, we, all, uh, we always love. Exactly what tools exist for managing urban development and which of these tools are actually being used? Uh, there is a system of planning uh, that exists in this country. And our planning uh, is, is all the way from the national level where we talk about national special plan. And from there, then we, are, we can have inter-county planning, which is uh, planning that transcends uh, two different counties. Uh, or two or more different counties. And then, and then there's also the county level uh, planning, which are county plans. And then we have urban plans. Uh, uh, and that urban plans, uh, then they also need to be drilled down to the neighbor level, local level uh, uh, plans. So that as a sim, uh, I would say needs to be optimized. And to optimize it is to ensure that these plans are actually being done as they should be done. Uh, remember there are legal uh, timelines. Uh, for how long a plan should, uh, uh, should, should stay before it's being updated, uh, how long it should be used, or how long it should run before it's due for review, it's due for uh, update. Uh, so the, the situation as it is right now, uh, you find different towns, different urban areas, different cities at various levels, uh, not really uh, same level of, 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 of delivery uh, uh, of those, uh, those kind of plans. And even where they exist at city level, then they don't exist at a local neighborhood level. So there's a disconnect that uh, the people who are at a higher level, and remember at every level, they are stakeholders. So if you don't uh, uh, prepare uh, the plan at neighborhood level, then you don't actually get to activate stakeholders at neighborhood level. So they stay in, disengaged from the city building project. Now that becomes a project of higher level uh, stakeholders at county level, uh, probably a uh, uh, national level. Uh, and we are saying that then becomes an inefficient system. Uh, if we can activate the system all the way from national level to the local level, neighbor level, then we are able to activate all relevant stakeholders. And if then they can stay engaged uh, for during uh, formulation and implementation of this plan, then we will not have any consistency, we will not have any gaps that remember can be exploited by people of ill will or people who also want to drive in their, uh, their special interests. And these special interests are actually uh, the bane of our city building project. They get to be used to destroy our urban communities. They get to be used, these gaps get to be used uh, to grab our, our, our special resources like wetland, like open spaces, like even where lives. Uh, so for us to actually even cure the problem of corruption, uh, problem of land grabbing, the problem of uh, 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 development that is out of tandem with our expectations, then we need to fill the gap in our planning system that all the plans uh, need to be delivered. Then once they deliver, then we get to the next question, how can they be implemented? Then we retain all the stakeholders and we resource uh, people who should enforce. And remember, uh, I've not seen a better enforce our plans than a neighborhood uh, association, than a resident association. They know if they have the image uh, shared widely, then they're even able to stop some of their neighbors. 
from putting up any, 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 any offensive development or any development that is, is inconsistent with the ideals, with the vision of that specific neighborhood. So I, I would say that for me is, is an important tool. And this tool can actually be supported by innovations. It can be supported uh, by the right uh, policy and legal uh, instruments. I think uh, uh, I would say this uh, uh, tool is uh, the plan. The plan can be supported by uh, available technologies and innovations, a plan that also can be supported by the right uh, uh, investment at the right scale. And that also could be supported by a lot of uh, uh, governance, the improvement on urban governance, and, and what kind of uh, and whatnot, and also uh, a place for every stakeholder in the urban space, so that no one is actually left behind. How do we finance the required tasks for improved urban management for local authorities? From recent uh, studies, uh, we have uh, we know that uh, our local governments are actually having chronic uh, uh, chronic uh, financial distress. And, and from a recent uh, study by uh, Commission on Revenue Allocation, CRA, uh, as we fondly uh, refer to it, has established that only between uh, uh, about three uh, counties uh, are able to finance. Remember, we have, about, uh, we have 47 counties in Kenya and one national government. Uh, so three of them are able to finance uh, between 25 to 45% of their county budget uh, through their own source revenue. Over half, slightly about 25, uh, can only finance less than 5% uh, through their own source revenue. Uh, this is, one, is both a challenge and I think an, an opportunity. Uh, the challenge being that if that is their uh, the financial outlay, the, the ability to raise funds, then this ability, if, if most of them, are about 25 counties out of 47, only able to finance less than 5% through their own source revenue, then it means that they will be entirely dependent uh, for most of their budget obligations on the national government. And, 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 and this the national government has a responsibility over the rest of the country. So it will not be enough uh, to finance uh, departments at, the, at those local level uh, because the money has to be shared across the country. So there is a case what, why I'm speaking about the potential there is a potential for exploring ways of uh, filling this gap uh, through uh, improved uh, round up uh, uh, on source revenue and, 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 and comparing the main sources of revenue uh, for these uh, counties in distress, you can see already there is potential for development fees uh, in, in, in most of these uh, urban areas because with our kind of uh, governance system that uh, we established uh, through our new constitution in 2010 uh, of having a national government and then devolved uh, her power in 47 counties. Uh, then there is some sense of autonomy uh, for these uh, uh, urban areas, for these uh, counties to even generate their own uh, 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 revenue. And, and I think uh, with the right mechanism, with the, with the right regulatory and policy framework, then there is, uh, uh, if you ask me, scope uh, for generating the more uh, revenue and trying to fill uh, some of these gaps uh, in, in, in revenue uh, resource. And, 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 and I think on this call, we, we are pushing, especially as uh, top planners, as, as, as top planners in this country, we are pushing for uh, greater autonomy uh, and independence uh, for these units when it comes to uh, raising revenue and, and, and even exploring uh, alternative uh, ways of generating uh, these own source revenue. Uh, I know there's a lot of push and a lot of interest in clawing back or uh, 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 mandating national uh, level agencies to collect uh, taxes or to collect this revenue at those levels. If, if you take away that responsibility of collecting uh, this kind of revenues uh, back to the center, then the periphery, uh, and I mean these counties, these urban areas, then they lose the interest uh, of even collecting, uh, optimize even the current uh, uh, areas they are collecting their revenue on. So I think uh, if uh, we can transfer, and, and I think this is uh, uh, the objective of the people who framed our constitution, the people who formulated our constitution, was to enable uh, that kind of autonomy, that kind of uh, 
ability, capacity to generate uh, revenue and to have uh, these units uh, to a level that is most uh, self-sustaining uh, uh, so that they are able now to incubate uh, uh, the necessary uh, incentives, the necessary inputs uh, in the social economic transformation of their people. So we can uh, do, uh, do, do better to support them uh, to generate enough and to generate more, more, more revenue than they are doing uh, currently through building the, uh, the skills, the competencies at that level uh, for generation of these and also exploring uh, uh, what are the, the alternative uh, uh, revenue or financing uh, uh, avenues uh, for the sake of improved uh, urban uh, management. Remember these urban areas require a lot of infrastructure. They require a lot of uh, services. They require a lot of uh, investments. And, and, and they can't do that uh, if they don't have enough uh, revenue, enough financing uh, to carry out those, uh, uh, those, those, those objectives. Uh, let's uh, be guided by the objects of our constitution. Let, let fulfill that uh, constitutional responsibility that we all have uh, in our various positions, either in government at the national and local level, and also out here in the private sector and uh, elsewhere. Uh, we must be guided that the objective was to make these units self-sustaining and in a way to be able to optimize uh, whatever they're collecting and to be able to uh, to deliver uh, the services that we require of them. So in your view, what is the future of Kenya's towns and cities urbanization and how should these towns adapt to be more resilient with regards to climate change and other existential threats? I'll, I'll say we are at a crossroad. Uh, and, and, and I think this course will add two directions. What direction is uh, we can choose to take action now uh, or not take any action? Uh, of course, uh, the, depending on our choice, they will have different uh, consequences. And I think if we decide to take action now, if we decide to complete our devolution uh, processes, uh, that of uh, the functions that we've assigned to uh, local governments and urban areas, if, if, if we proceed uh, to follow that through with the, the right financing or the, uh, the right financing mechanisms, the right administrative or logistical uh, support that is required and that uh, uh, activate uh, the necessary uh, uh, stakeholders and, 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 and the people of goodwill uh, who wants to see the, the, the project uh, urban area succeed, I think then that will give us uh, the ability to, uh, to face uh, the future more boldly uh, and then even, uh, even more confidently, uh, because now we'll have set in a system that is, is, is the self-executing. Once you put everything, then everything runs uh, uh, like clockwork. Uh, if those are the choices we, 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 we make, then then it will be good uh, for the future of our cities and the future uh, uh, of our Kenyan uh, situation. If we choose uh, the other direction, where now we uh, constrain, or we stifle, or we, uh, uh, we defund uh, these, these local governments or these urban areas, so we don't give them the financing that squared, we claw back uh, on the function that we ceded uh, uh, password to our const new constitution in 2010. Uh, and then we also follow, uh, we also remain cynical that uh, the local level cannot deliver uh, uh, the promise as, 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 as espoused uh, in our new constitution. Then that also, that choice will have uh, very dark consequences. And, and, and I dare say that if that is uh, the path we take, then we were not able to build uh, resilient urban communities, resilient uh, cities, resilient towns, and, 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 and will be ravaged uh, quite seriously. Uh, uh, remember, we are, uh, we are living in the climate, uh, climate age, climate change. Uh, the impacts will ravage uh, entire communities uh, and our coastal uh, towns, actually. Uh, we have a very long uh, coastline, uh, those communities would be ravaged even, 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 even more. Uh, and, and most uh, of the Kenyan landscape, uh, remember, is a south, arid and semi arid uh, lands, about 80% of it. So if we don't take uh, action, we don't manage our urban development better, we don't uh, uh, manage our, our growth, then uh, it will be destructive 
will just have uh, uh, committed suicide uh, animals. And, and, and I don't think that's uh, what uh, we, we, we intend to do. I remember if we don't manage uh, this urbanization, then we will be encouraging urban sprawl. And uh, we've noted earlier that uh, the cost per capita uh, uh, to deliver uh, necessary infrastructure uh, services and, 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 and networks, it will be three, six times uh, uh, more than in places where uh, these uh, the sprawl or even, even uh, urbanization is managed better. So in a sense, will be six times living more expensively than people who make the right choices uh, uh, now. So I think uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge over time and it's a challenge that we, we are up to uh, collectively if we are able to find the courage and the boldness to engage even more, uh, to collaborate even more and, and to be sincere uh, in our intentions and, 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 and be able to follow through. Uh, most of our plans, most of our uh, uh, legislation. Uh, remember, uh, there are the people uh, who keep saying that Africa has, has a lot of good documents, good plans, good uh, policies. Uh, uh, but remember, they're not self-executing. So they will be good on the shelves uh, until someone uh, gets the courage and, and, and the, 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 the conviction to follow through with what is required. Uh, that action should not be so hard to make. Uh, I think it's something if, if, we, if we keep, if we remain faithful to the cause uh, and to the desires of our, of our forefathers, I think it's something that we're able to deliver uh, to the next generation. I think a very important question to ask is, what are the towns and cities that people actually want? Uh, that question speaks to the hearts. Uh, most of our city residents, most of the people who even migrate to uh, urban areas. Remember, the, there is always that promise that the, if you go to urban areas, if you reside in urban areas, you will have better opportunities uh, to progress uh, economically, you will have better uh, social ties, you will have better opportunities in terms of education, in terms of healthcare, in terms of uh, even interactions. Uh, they will be qualitative, you will also be able to access better social facilities, you'll also be able to uh, access better uh, physical infrastructure. And generally, uh, your life will be better. So in a sense, the city that people want is actually that city, the urban area, that town that can deliver uh, in a nutshell all those good things. So I think uh, uh, the irony is, uh, is, is, is almost like a rude awakening once people uh, land in these cities, these towns, depending on uh, the health uh, of the urban management units. Uh, if the urban management unit is actually uh, in, in the process, uh, is focused on delivering uh, the city that responds uh, uh, to these desires from the residents and those people and, and migrating uh, from outside the city, from the peri-urban uh, peri areas, from uh, the rural areas. Uh, then, in a way, they're able to uh, to deliver uh, uh, to a level uh, those, those those kind of desires or those kind of needs. Uh, uh, and, and 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 I talk to many people. I talk to many many many, many stakeholders, and uh, that seems to uh, be the message that the city can deliver more. Why aren't it <laughs> delivering then? Uh, then you, you again goes back to the gaps. Uh, how can they be better? So I think a city that remains faithful uh, to these desires, uh, uh, then uh, we'll be able to deliver uh, the city for all age groups, for all kind of people, for all uh, uh, for, for for all shades and color. Uh, if I, if I, if I, if we can use that uh, that remark, and and already uh, like I said, if I can summarize, uh, the planning system provides the tool to deliver our city if people remain faithful to it. Resolving the problem of coordination in regards to mandates and responsibilities when it comes to managing urban growth and development, what is the magic bullet? It's clear we need to make uh, integrated planning uh, the central pillar in, in organizing in uh, our urban areas, our cities, our towns, our municipalities. Uh, all urban areas must have the organizing theme principles and that should be uh, the, the output of the integrated planning uh, framework because it's already uh, uh, provided for in the constitution already and the enabling legislation. So I think uh, 
if we do that as a centerpiece, uh, then we need to uh, really uh, uh, raise the profile uh, of whatever department or whatever uh, agency, whatever office that is charged of that process. Uh, uh, I remember in Nairobi, there is already a specialized agency, uh, Nairobi Metropolitan uh, Service, that now had some functions transferred from Nairobi City County uh, to the agency uh, to be able to handle. Uh, the story is uh, the agency is able to manage uh, these functions uh, more efficiently, uh, but, 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 but uh, the agency is uh, running to a close. I mean, uh, the tool uh, uh, that the agreement that, that, that shares out those responsibilities between those two uh, entities is about to expire. I think uh, we are going to election next year. So after next year, then they don't have the mandate to continue uh, performing those functions that they, they got from the uh, Nairobi City County. So I think uh, the effort, if, 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 uh, if you ask me, is uh, we are trying to find that ma magic bullet in terms of urban management. How can we manage our cities better? And, and, and that is just one way. Do we, do we form a specialized uh, agency? or do we rely on the traditional uh, uh, setup uh, as prescribed by the constitution of uh, having national government level uh, run those uh, national uh, related issues and then county government and, and urban areas run those local uh, uh, government issues. And, and, and I think uh, my take would be, uh, the magic bullet would be, can we just uh, complete uh, the devolution, devolution process where we said uh, this function goes to local government. Can we just transfer that function fully, uh, completely? And can we follow that uh, with, 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 the, with the necessary support in terms of financing, in terms of uh, administrative logistical uh, support, in terms of the right uh, caliber of uh, personnel qualified? Uh, we Our towns uh, dialy need uh, uh, architects, registered architects, they need registered engineers, they need registered town planners, they need all those and with all the support uh, in terms of uh, uh, vehicles, in terms of uh, even programs, so that they're able to update their knowledge uh, as uh, progressively as uh, they move forward. So we, with, with that, I think that for me would constitute the magic bullet. Cyrus, lastly, what is the place of stakeholder engagement in development planning and implementation? Who has the power? How much power do they have? Who has what stake and who needs to determine what happens in the city? Every election time uh, or every holiday, uh, people seem to troop to, uh, troop to their rural areas or where they originally came from. Uh, remember, Nairobi is not uh, so old. I mean, it's, uh, it's only 150 years old. I mean, uh, it's sprung, it's brought up uh, from a railway city uh, in 1900, so that, that was hardly uh, 130 years uh, ago. So I think uh, being that young, uh, probably on a second generation or that, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so most people still uh, maintain their, uh, the networks uh, of the places they came from, uh, most certainly their rural areas. And, 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 and that, uh, that, 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 that network uh, that, that's remained firm, uh, that's uh, defied uh, uh, the changes that we've witnessed in recent past. So uh, every important occasion, then people seem to troop back to prefer their rural areas over the city. And in most cases, uh, actually, uh, we are going to Christmas. The city is deserted uh, uh, until the New Year's. Uh, that means important uh, days are not for uh, most city residents, uh, they prefer spending that uh, outside uh, the city. Uh, and this also applies to when we're doing elections. I mean, most people are registered voters where they originally came from, uh, certainly rural areas. So in a way, they don't seem to have the stake that's required uh, to even get interested in, in, in management uh, of the city. And, and I think also that is a, a worrying uh, a trend or a worrying concern uh, for the people who are interested in the city building project, we would want uh, a, a citizenry uh, uh, that's engaged, uh, not just intermittently, not, not seasonal engagement. I think we need fully engaged citizenry that, that is voting, that is determining who gets into a city hall, or who gets into local government, who gets into a national government, 
uh, and, and who gets to do what so that at least uh, this engaged citizenry, this engaged stakeholder can progressively uh, uh, also be involved in uh, legislative and planning processes uh, that seek to improve uh, the city. Uh, if they vacate that role uh, or if they are absent uh, from those spaces, then, then those gaps, uh, like I keep saying, they can be uh, exploited by people of ill will or people who have other interests uh, to the detriment of the city building project. And, 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 and I think uh, uh, moving forward, every effort should be made to uh, make uh, the different constituencies, the citizenry, uh, the different community level associations, neighborhood associations, and all that. Uh, be at the center stage uh, of decision making uh, that, that these urban areas and you know towns and our municipalities that way then uh, in a way it will it, it will provide some oversight uh, to the people whose primary responsibility is to deliver uh, the city and, and i think that way then that we are able now to uh, uh, to restructure the power play or the power power balance uh, in these cities and in these towns and that power, if used uh, or even projected uh, correctly, then will uh, uh, provide uh, the right conditions uh, for uh, creating a city's fit for the moment or for the future, especially uh, given uh, uh, the, the current conditions going into the future.